Seven high school football players have died this season alone from game-related injuries. The latest death is 17-year-old Andre Smith, who you see there from Chicago. According to a medical examiner, he died from a blunt force head injury. Seven high schoolers dead this year alone may seem like a lot, but sadly, that's simply on pace with statistics from recent years. In 2014, 11 deaths both directly and indirectly due to high school football. In 2013, that number was 18 deaths. Now at this point, you may say, hold on, there are more than a million high school football players each year, so are these numbers really that shocking? Well, let's compare to the figure for how many pro football players died due to direct or indirect injuries. You ready for it? That number is zero. Joining me now to talk about this, HLN anchor, Mike Galanos, whose two boys both play high school football or played high school football, an assistant professor for New York University School of Medicine, Dr. Devi Nampia Parampil. Uh, Mike, I want to start with you. Uh, you know, you are an avid football fan. You and I talk football here in the office, mm -hmm. uh, you know, come Monday morning, uh, Tuesday morning. And obviously, this is something that you acknowledge when you sent your kids off to play football. What's your reaction to hearing this number? Seven kids dead. It, well, it's sad, especially when you look at Andre Smith, the last one. Great kid. He was thinking of walking on somewhere. What I think is going to happen is, and the numbers kind of bear it out, you see a slow trickle of less kids playing. Football's not going anywhere. We still love football, and we're going to still love football for years to come. But what this is, I think, Ali, is a wake-up call to parents. Do your homework on behalf of your kids. When you see a story like this, make sure that you check out the place where your child is going to play. If you're going to go for youth football, go check out the facility ahead of time. Maybe if they're going to play next year, go now and watch them. How do they practice? How do, how do they teach their kids? Are they rough on them? If they lose, go, go to then and see how they treat those right. kids. Do your homework. Make sure your child's going to get good coaching because it really could save their life. Yeah, Dr. Devi, uh, let's talk about the fact that these injuries are not always the injury in and of itself that's leading to these deaths, but underlying medical issues which weren't caught perhaps in the screening process that qualify these kids to play, right? Sure. So uh, those are at least some of the deaths. So for example, sometimes people can have underlying heart conditions that aren't obvious until they get injured or they start playing sports. I mean, sometimes let's say a person has asthma or something else that can actually contribute to them getting injured later, mm -hmm. or having, having a, a flare of their asthma. But I do think there are three different areas where we could intervene. So of course, you know, in terms of the screening of the kids, so before they actually play, you can do things to improve the likelihood that they're going to do well or that they're going to be okay and healthy. Uh, you could do things when they're actually playing the sport so if they get injured recognizing those injuries and I think that's an area where we can really do a lot right. and then of course if a child is actually injured and you've diagnosed it what do you do after that to minimize the harms to that child so in terms of them returning to play yeah a number of different arenas that could be focused on Mike let's say I make you the commissioner of high school football right now are you looking at things like mercy rules if one team is clearly dominating the other or realigning leagues not based on school enrollments but rather the you know physical stats of a particular team or maybe even changes to the rules things like no more kickoffs where a lot of those violent collisions well, happen. well that's what happened in Andre's case sadly to say over the yeah. weekend what was the it was the last play of a meaningless season it was a kickoff return right. and when you look at kickoff returns we watched the Giants take one back to oh. beat the Cowboys it's an exciting play but the collisions you're talking about 40 50 yard sprints and then we're gonna collide mm -hmm. and at high school level that's potentially what happened to it's Andre here, yeah. and, and the, the score of that game, 78 to 22, that tells you this game was a mismatch, and that's another thing you want to look at. What kind of team is your child going to be on? Uh, if they're in a, in a startup program, they could get their clock cleaned on the scoreboard and on the field, and you got to watch that. Uh, Dr. Devi, we've gotten Mike's advice on, uh, you know, different things he may be doing. What is your advice that you would give parents uh, in advance of allowing their children to play football? Well, I think parents have to be more involved. So I agree with Mike. I mean, they really need to be able to recognize injuries as well because we're relying on coaches and, and the kids themselves to actually report injuries, but they may not realize. So they really need to know what they're at risk for. And then the other fact is that kids don't really have an incentive to report their injuries, right? Mm -hmm. They might feel a lot of pressure to win that game. They don't want to let themselves down. They don't want to let their teammates down or their coach down, their, the community. So they may not come forward right away if they're having symptoms. Mm -hmm. And also a lot of the symptoms, not the deadly symptoms, but in terms of milder chronic injuries, they may not be as obvious, so they affect your thinking and your mood and your personality. Right. So it's important for the parents to also keep an eye out for those changes. Yeah, obviously, plenty of things to be considered before allowing your child to go on to play. Dr. Devi, Mike, thank you both mm -hmm. so much for joining us for the discussion.